It has just been announced, April 19, 1923, that the ruins of the city of Chichen Itza, there have been discovered the statue of Chak Mul, the famous tiger king of the ancient Mayans. This is none other than a statue that personifies the sun god, still bearing his ideal mythic title, Chak Mule, from the Irish, Cock, C-A-C, each, every, all, the whole, universal, and Ayesa is the personal savior of each and every man. He is also the universal savior of all, and Mule, M-I-O-L, an animal, any animal, an ideal term which the Irish priests apply to the sun, Chok Mool is called the Tiger King because of the fact that the tiger, or jaguar, a fierce native animal, is the king of the jungle of the Yucatan. This is after the Irish ideal of our Bible that the sun is a heavenly lion and that the earthly lion is the king of the animal world. It is from the ideal that we get this term, lion of the fold of Judah. What stronger proof could be adduced or wished with which to confound the falsifiers of history, Roman or British, and those who follow their lead. In the press news of the day is published the opinion of an archaeologist that the date of the structure of the vast architectural remains of Chichen Itza goes back to the 7th century. Such an opinion will bear revision in view of the convincing evidence of a vastly greater antiquity where we may ask, can it be shown that any other such like structures have been built in any part of the world since the 7th century or within even the period, so-called, of the Christian era? No, those buildings are many thousands of years older than some would have believed. The cross and the crucifix are especially and peculiarly identified in the ancient Aryan sun worship and Christian church of Iesa Cristo. They are symbolic of the crucified son in the heaven and his human counterpart his spirit in man in the flesh this identification of those symbols with the ancient irish who were the original missionary race of the world makes it easy to understand why there is such a similarity in the names of the hindu savior krishna and the christian savior christ they are one and the same and come from the same source another side note if you read the Bhagavad Gita, they also say that, that Krishna and Christ are the same universal consciousness, the same spirit, the same, basically the same being. And this explains also why Brahmanism, Buddhism, and Christianity so nearly resemble each other. They are all due to those missionaries of the Irish First Church of Christ. It has always been a puzzle to honest investigators to account for this striking resemblance. It is the exploits of the past of history of ancient Irish people who were chronicled in our histories. They would have been no difficulty whatever in accounting for those facts. The same policy of destruction, suppression, and alteration with which pursued Ireland by Rome, she also put into execution on the western continent. In Mexico, as elsewhere, anything that was found resembling Christianity was destroyed if it was possible to do so. The Roman priests destroyed all the books they could find, and those they preserved, they altered. They deleted the whole chapters from the writings of the native historians who wrote the history of Mexico. See Bible Myths, page 199. Everything written by the natives was subject to inquisition of the Spanish priests. But, despite all the destruction of the literature and monuments by the Spanish and others, there is enough left to fully prove the connection between the Irish or Aryans and the discovery of the settlement of the Western continent. There is a tradition among the natives of Central America that the first of their people came from over the sea to the eastward and were white men and bearded, and that the beard had been proverbially worn by the ancient Irish. They are also portrayed to us as, and what is more, it has been found that one of the oldest of the Mayan races, the Chiapanique, after the lapse of many thousands of years, has in his language many words of the same meaning and almost identical with Hebrew. This is according to the Mexican scholar Sir Melgar in North America of Antiquity, page 475. Quoted also in Donnelly's Atlantis, page 234. He has compiled a list of words 
a list of words of both languages which bear out this connection. And it has been shown, according to Donnelly, that there is a similarity between the Mayan and the Phoenician alphabets, which is not surprising in view of all the facts. When we consider that the Irish were the Phoenicians, P-H-O-E-N-I-C-I-A-N-S, the Phoenicians, and also we have shown that the Hebrews were the priestly cult among the Irish race, it makes very plain the identity of those three peoples as being one and the same. Investigators have noted in the relationship between Hebrews, in quotes, and the Phoenicians, in quotes, attributing to the spread of Hebrew culture and influences among the latter. This seems to be as far as they have been able to go forward enlightening us. They have left us to infer that this connection was due to the two peoples occupying the two adjoining sections of the country, the Hebrews occupying the interior pastoral country and the Phoenicians the seacoast. Those investigators seem to have accepted the false story of history and at its face value and to have drawn their inferences accordingly. The Phoenicians, in quote, and the Hebrews, in quotes, were one and the same race, as much as two brothers living in the same household or a father and son in the same family. These are but trick names for the Irish race. Ireland was their seat, capital, and home country, not to the eastern coast of the Mediterranean or Syria. This exposes a major deception of history and surely will help to give a clearer perspective of the past and quicken realization of the fraud which has been imposed upon us. This deception has caused no end of confusion among the scholars and investigators, but the announcement of the identity of those three races as being one is a fact given out in the pages of the first time with the positive assurance of truth. The disclosures made here will be of aid to future investigators and philologists in tracing and accounting for the changes which have been made here in the three alphabets, said to have belonged respectively to the Irish, Hebrews, and Phoenicians. They are, they are but variations of one. We have good reason to believe, and it is it has been stated, that there have been changes made in the Irish alphabet since the advent of the Latin influence of Rome into Ireland. The research work and explorations of, of which have been made, the excavations now going on, at the immense ruins in Mexico and Central America, if properly appraised by unbiased and capable investigators, will without a doubt correspond with the facts set forth in these pages, the very character and nature of these ruins, pyramids, sphinx, and temples at Palenque, near the city of Mexico, and at Uxmal and Chichen Itza in the Yucatan, and others elsewhere in America are sufficient evidence to establish the authorship of those vast, impressive, and inspiring instructive remains. Those first religious rites and ceremonies which were found here by the Spaniards are peculiarly of Irish origin and have been identified with their early Christian sun worship from the most ancient times. The Irish were the inspired authors of Christianity, which is plainly evident from what has been unfolded herein, and their rites are still observed in the disguised Christian sun worship of the present day. It all goes to show that there has been a deception practiced on the Christian people of the world, a terrible and cruel deception. The reason for it is no longer a secret. And while those early masters who formulated those rites, as well as the ethical and spiritual principles which we find embodied in the myths and all allegories of our Bible, were born as an Irishman of the Irish race. They were really for the world at large. They labored for all humanity. They carried the divine message of God's truth and the brotherhood of man around the world, east and west, north and south, and gave freely of such as were able to receive. To those great teachers we are indebted for our culture. We owe more to them than to any other. They cannot, and they must not, be denied this acknowledgement. Their works are spread throughout the world and bear a correspondence that is unmistakable. They built on so grand and imposing a scale as to proclaim to us today their fidelity and loyalty to the exemplar and ideal Savior, the Sun God, 
whom they conceived as the Logos and Creator of all, and to honor Him for His glorification and worship, they built those great magnificent pyramids, towers, obelisks, sphinx, and temples. In brief, their works and ideals can be recognized everywhere, from the rock-walled temple ruins of Angkor Wat in the distant Cambodia to Siam, from Elora and the cave temple of Elephante in India to the islands of the Pacific from Ireland to Egypt, from Syria to Peru, Yucatan, and Mexico. The character of their work cannot be mistaken. These facts are so clear that they cannot be mistaken or set aside. They are convincing and a positive proof. They proclaim to the world that both the religious institutions and the civilizations which existed on the Western continent for thousands of years were brought here by the priests of the ancient Irish sun worship religion of Ayesa Creost, the sun god. End of chapter. Side note. When it comes to Phoenician being the Phoenicians, most people don't know what Phoenician is or Phoenician, but um, Finn is an ancient word for the sun in Ireland, and uh, they even have political parties in Ireland um, that have that word. Um, Sinn Féin uh, is one of them. And, but, but Finian is also an area or a region in Ireland where sun worship in ancient times was known. So uh, phonetically, that language, the, the Hebraic Hebrew, Hebraic language, really is not Jewish. And I've talked about this before. It's not of a people of, of Judaism. It's much older. Uh, it's mostly connected to today to Gaelic or Welsh. That's the most closely related language to Hebrew. So you got to ask yourself, why is that? Um, and when you do, it becomes pretty obvious that the reason why Gaelic and Welsh are the mother tongues of Hebrew is because ancient Ireland was also called Hibernia. And I don't really know if it was called Aria before it was called Hibernia or if it was called Hibernia before it was called Aria. But Aria became the word Are, which became Ireland or Aria land. But anyway, Hibernia is definitely, it's a fact, one of the ancient names of Ireland and the Hibernians come from a word called Eber or Heber or Ibaru, which is where the word Hebaru comes from. So the Hibernians of Ireland were a caste of people, basically a spiritual priesthood or Magi of people teaching uh, the sacred arts and teaching, you know, geometry and math and science and navigation and cosmology and um, the written word. Um, so what I'm trying to say is very few people will look into this, but they should, that Hebrew is not a Jewish language. It is from ancient Ireland, and it's a Gaelic, Welsh, or ancient Hibernian language. Okay, I hope this inspires people to dig a little deeper and do some research on their own. To me, alternative history is more fascinating than what we, what we think is real history. Because as we know, history is ever-changing, being, always being edited, and also usually written by the victories, the victors of, of war, the people that collect the spoils. You have to always look at the the losing side of the war and read their accounts to at least get a semi-objective idea of what maybe have, has really occurred. Okay, anyway, Connor McDarry, a brilliant book. I suggest people get it and read it themselves. And um, he's got other works as well, but this one is called Irish Wisdom Preserved in Bible and Pyramids. Connor McDarry. Thank you. <laughs>